In this video, we're going to introduce a new integration technique called trigonometric substitution. I want to start off just by taking a, a few minutes just to kind of motivate why we even need to talk about this new thing called trigonometric substitution by, by looking at an example. So uh, here I've got an example. We've got an integral that we're trying to compute. Uh, x squared divided by the square root of 9 minus x squared. Now if I were to, to hand this to a calculus student, I, I can probably anticipate what they might try. Uh, they might look at, at possibly doing maybe like u substitution where they let the inside of the radical be the u. Right, That's kind of what would tip you off that this might be u substitution. But if you look a step or two beyond that, you'll, you'll see that u substitution unfortunately doesn't uh, it doesn't really work work out too well. If we if we let the u be the 9 minus x squared, then unfortunately the du would be negative 2x, not x squared. And there's no, no real way for accounting for that uh, extra x, unfortunately. That's kind of bad news. And so so that way is out. So it's not it's not u substitution, unfortunately. So what 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 are some other options? Well um, there is a fraction, you know, maybe it's the log rule perhaps, but I think we can quickly rule that out as well. Uh, it's just it's pretty clear that's that's not gonna gonna work out either. Um, maybe kind of looks like an inverse trig integral, uh, a couple of those templates because a few of those templates had a radical in them. But again, if you if you um, kind of chase that rabbit uh, down down that trail, you'll see that uh, that doesn't work too well either. Um, just nothing seems to fit. None of our basic, uh, normal, traditional integration techniques seem to work for this guy. And this is where trigonometric substitution comes in. This would be a great time to, to use this guy. So here's what he's used for. He, he helps us integrate expressions, certain expressions, uh, specifically ones that have radicals in them. Uh, radicals create lots of problems when, when we integrate. And so under certain circumstances, um, trig substitution could really, really help. All right, now you might look at this and say, well, well, Devin, hang on just a minute. Time out. This is called trig substitution. I don't see any trig in here. I don't see any sines, any cosines, any tangents, or anything like that. And uh, I would I would totally agree with you there. And so here, here's the, the big picture idea, and we'll, we'll hash out these details later in this video. The idea is when you have a, an ugly integral similar to this one, especially one that contains a radical, there's something you can do, uh, some substitution you can make that will switch this integral in terms of, instead of being in terms of radicals, being in terms of sines and cosines. That's going to be much easier to integrate. So we'll integrate the trig expressions that we've substituted in these radicals place. Then when we're done and we have our answer, we'll put our answer back in terms of the radicals. So that's that's why it's called trigonometric substitution. We're going to be substituting some trig functions in here uh, temporarily to help us with the algebra. And so it turns out there are three different types of trig substitutions we can make, and it depends on what your radical looks like. One form, the first form of the three, would be something of the form square root a squared minus u squared, which would be this type. Or if you look at this guy right here, this is the square root of 9 minus x squared. 9 is 3 squared, and obviously u squared would, would be your x squared. The a squared has to be a constant. The u squared has to have variables. That's important. Right? There's two other types that we're not going to cover in this video. We, we will look at the first type in this video pretty thoroughly. But this video will be very, very long if we tried to tackle all three. So we'll save the other two for another video. If your radical has the, the form square root of a squared plus u squared, there's a different substitution you can make. And if your radical has, uh, if your integral has the um, square root of u squared minus a squared, then there's a different substitution you can make. So there's going to be three we're going to have to know. They're all similar in thought process, but um, the actual substitutions could uh, could potentially be a little different. Uh, now notice there is a difference between uh, number one and number three. Number one has a squared minus u squared, and number three has u squared minus a squared. And so the order of those terms is important, which one has the variable coming first and which one has the constant coming first. But we're going to kind of focus on this guy in this video.
uh, as I said earlier. Okay, so let's see let's see how these substitutions work. Let's assume that we have an integral that has one of these guys, the square root of a squared minus u squared. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to make up a right triangle. And this, it's not going to be clear right away why we're making right triangles, but it will become clear very, very shortly. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put this term with the radical on one of these edges. Let's take this edge, for instance. So we have a squared minus u squared on the edge of this right triangle. All right, now, um, you'll notice uh, the Pythagorean theorem would be applicable because this is a right triangle. And so if you take this leg squared plus this leg squared, it should equal the hypotenuse squared. You remember from your pre-calculus days, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which still holds here. Now think for a moment, what would happen if you squared this side? What would happen if you squared that side? Well, you'll notice the radical would disappear. You, you would not have a radical anymore, which would just leave you with a squared minus u squared only. Do you see how that would make it very nice if we had u squared on this side? Because then you'd have a squared minus u squared plus u squared equals a squared, right? The, the remaining term here. The Pythagorean theorem would fit very nicely. So that means these actual edges need to be u and a because we would only square them when, when we do the Pythagorean theorem. Now, again, it may not be clear why we're doing this, so just, just hang with me, bear with me, and you'll see where all this is going, right? So this is a complete right triangle. Um, the, the Pythagorean theorem holds this side squared plus this side squared does, in fact, equal the hypotenuse squared. And this right triangle has angles inside of it, such as like this angle, we'll call it theta, right? Now, here's, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a trig relationship between theta and these edges. These edges are the terms that have the radicals and the variables and the constants and we can equate these with trig expressions and so you hopefully you kind of see where we're headed with this. So if I would like to somehow write a trig expression that related theta and the variable u, I see two trig expressions that could do that. Tangent of theta would be opposite over adjacent and sine of theta would have opposite over hypotenuse. Both of those use the opposite edge. Now, which one would be preferred? Because um, we could use either. Well, I, I think I personally am going to go with the sine relationship. Sine of theta equals u over a, so that I only have u with a constant as opposed to u with an ugly radical. This is just simpler. Now, notice you can rewrite this guy as u equals a times sine theta, of course. Just I just simply move the a to the other side. Let's put a box around that. This is going to be important coming up in just a minute. All right? You'll notice in a similar way, and I'm not going to write out all the algebra, but notice you can write uh, an expression for the radical, not with a sine relationship in, in, using a, but with a cosine relationship, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, as you well know. So we have the square root of a squared minus u squared uh, equals a cosine theta. Okay, so let's put a box around this one. These two are fundamentally important, right? And so, so now we can kind of peel back the curtain and we see exactly what's going on. When you have an integral uh, like this guy, like this guy that has a, a radical expression in it, what we're going to do is we're going to make up a right triangle uh, like this and we're going to substitute that radical expression in our integral for a cosine theta. If you have any straggling terms, any leftover just x terms or, or variable terms, you can substitute those with a sine theta. And what we're going to do is substitution. We're going to take all the radicals and variables out and substitute in its place trig uh, type of expressions. And it turns out the, the algebra turn, turns out to be very, very nice. The integration turns out to be somewhat nice. And we can actually do an integral that we could not do before. All right, so, um, so if you still have some questions, that's totally natural. Um, let's work through it one example. And, uh, and then hopefully that'll answer some of your questions. Okay, so somebody hands us this integral and they said, okay, compute this integral. And uh, they're not going to tell you how. So... First thing we would do is we look at this guy. We try our normal rules. We try u substitution. We try 
you know, we try all of our, our normal um, ideas. Unfortunately, none of those are going to work as we've already said. But I, I, something catches my eye. I see, oh, we have a radical and it's a squared minus u squared. Uh, so I, I can make a substitution. And so um, let, let me actually mention something real briefly here. Most textbooks, and this is something I would discourage from a textbook. That's normally not the case. Normally, most textbooks are pretty spot on. Most textbooks, when they, when they teach this, they will hand you a chart. They will hand you a, a chart that says, if you, it's one of those if then type deals. They'll say, if your integral contains somebody like this, then use this as the substitution. But remember, there was how many different types here? You had, you had uh, three different types of these trig substitutions, and then you have to, to then memorize if your integrand has one of these guys, then you use this as your u and this as your radical. Just personally, and I do this every day, that's a lot to memorize. That's a, probably a little too much to memorize. What I like to do and what I teach my students to do is to figure these um, substitutions out on the fly. That way you don't really have to memorize anything. And that's what we're going to do here. So even if you don't remember anything from this last card, which hopefully you remember some of it, but, um, but we're going to go through the process of finding these substitutions. So it will look something like this. If you have this integral, then we would make a right triangle ourselves. Not, we're not going to rely on anybody's chart or anything like that. And uh, this term with the radical, I know that, that he goes on one of the legs. We call this 9 minus x squared. And then you just look at the right triangle. What would be the term that would go here and on the hypotenuse? Well, hopefully you said x and 3, right? B based off of the same logic as from before, right? The u and the a, right? And then, uh, based off of that, then we can make our own substitutions. If this is theta, this is theta right here, then um, x is equal to 3 sine theta. And the reason for that is sine of theta is x over 3, right? But I wrote it this way so that x is solved for, but opposite over hypotenuse, basically. Okay, um, And then the radical, the square root of... 9 minus x squared would be equal to 3 cosine theta. Right? These are, these are going to be my substitutions. <clears throat> and notice I didn't memorize anything. We just derived those on the spot. <clears throat> so let's take this integral and let's rewrite it. So this would be the integral of what? Well, there would be a fraction bar. The denominator with the radical um, this guy is equivalent to 3 cosine theta. So I'm going to write 3 cosine theta instead in the denominator. The numerator is x squared. Now I only have an x. x is 3 sine theta, but of course we can square it. So this will be 3 <coughs> sine squared theta. Now there is one last little, little issue. This original integral was in terms of x, and so it was integrated with respect to x. There is still, unfortunately, a dx at the end, and that's a, a, a big thing that clashes with what we have, because our integral is in terms of theta. And no, you can't just switch x and theta. You can't just say, take dx out and put d theta in its place. Um, we, ha we have to do it appropriately. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Um, if here's x, we already know what x is, so it's not a big leap to figure out what dx is. Remember, we did something similar to this when we studied u substitution, where we find u and du. It's the same type of idea. What is dx? Well, dx would be 3 cosine theta d theta, right? You just take the derivative of x. Well, here's what dx is equivalent to, 3 cosine theta d theta. And so just down here at the bottom, instead of writing dx, I'm going to write 3 cosine theta d theta. It's going to work out just like that. Um, now this is a trig integral and so let's pause for a moment and see what we've done. Um, this integral right here is uh, a trig integral where it started as an integral with radicals. So now we're starting to see how trig substitution works. You start with an integral that has radicals and then you translate it through substitutions into an integral that has trig functions. Um, and this guy, I think, is, is pretty doable. Uh, for instance, I see some nice algebra. 
Uh, I see these threes cancel. I see these cosines cancel. So that's great, great news. So all we have left is the integral of three sine squared theta d theta. Let's um let's actually do that on the next card. So I have the integral of three sine squared theta d theta. Uh, I, I would hope that we know how to integrate this. Um, this is actually a trig type integral. Uh, you have an even power of sine, so we have to use the power reducing formula. And this doesn't directly have much to do with what we're what we've been talking about in this video. I would hope you would already know how to do this integral. So I, I'm going to go through this somewhat quickly. Um, power reducing formula for sine squared, which we should have memorized, <clears throat> would be one minus cosine two theta all divided by two. We can pull that um, this two out, or it's really like a one half for the whole fraction and get a three halves times the integral of one minus cosine two theta d theta like this. <clears throat> All right, and uh, let's see here. Um, we can integrate this guy. This would be three halves times the quantity. Integral of one with respect to theta would be theta. And with, again, without going through a lot of the time consuming algebra, and the integral of cosine two theta would be one half sine two theta. And then we'd have a plus C on the end, of course. Okay, so this is kind of our answer, but, um, but now we need to start <clears throat> backtracking and writing our answer back in terms of the original variable, which was X. This is our answer, but it's got the wrong variable. These have thetas, not X's. And so, on well, the next card, let me write this right here. We have three halves. Now, here's a theta. Here's a theta. What was theta? We need to go find him. What in the world was theta? Oh, let's see. Here, here's our card. Do we see anything that, that has a theta in it? Just a basic equation. Well, uh, here's a theta and here's a theta. Now, I can solve for theta in this equation or in this equation. I think I'll choose the first one just because it looks easier. So let, let's try that. I know that x equals three sine theta. Let me do this up here in the corner. If x equals three sine theta, how do we solve for theta? Well, sine theta would be equal to x over three. And so theta all by itself would be arc sine of x over three, all right? So this is what theta is. So we can come back to this answer, right, this answer that we had right here. I can take the theta out and replace it with arc sine of x over three, right? Uh, now I also have to um, also have to rewrite uh, this guy here in terms of x. Now this is going to pose a a, a uh, another issue, another separate problem. I've got one half sine two theta, not sine theta, unfortunately. That, that worries me because back here, uh, I've got a formula for sine theta. I do not really have a, a great formula for sine of two theta. Even if you use the right triangle, this is the angle theta. Uh, two theta would be like twice that angle. We don't know anything about that triangle. Well, luck, luckily for us, there is a trig identity that, that hopefully we know. Um, hopefully, and this is, man, pre-calculus is so, so important um, because we use so much of that stuff in random places in a course like Calc 2. Um, hopefully you remember that sine of 2 theta, there was a trig identity that said it was 2 sine theta times cosine theta. And this would be a great time to use this because this will let us rewrite sine of 2 theta in terms of just a simple sine and a cosine of just theta. Uh, nothing nothing um, that has a two theta in it okay so let me uh, let me actually take um, this two and the one half right here see this is one half times this quantity here and so one half times two sine theta cosine theta the two and the one half would cancel so this one half is gone now so we're really just subtracting we're really just subtracting sine theta times cosine theta. 
uh, again with a plus C on the end. So now we're not done yet, I just had to write something down temporarily so we have something to look at. All right, so our, our final equation would be three halves, arc sine of x over three minus blank times blank plus c. All right now, what's this blank times blank? We're almost done, we're almost done. Sine of theta and the cosine of theta. Well, remember, we have a right triangle already drawn for this guy. So what is sine of theta? Look, look at your right triangle. Sine of theta, I actually have it written right here. Sine of theta is x over 3. So I can take this sine theta out and put x over 3. And now what was cosine of theta? What's cosine of this angle? Was this radical over 3? So it would be the square root of 9 minus x squared divided by 3. Right? So this is your final answer. Obviously you can do different ways of rewriting it. You can distribute the 3 halves through if you wanted to and things like that. But I think we'll just leave it like this. But I, but I want you to see how impressive this was. Um, we started with an extremely different, difficult integral that we had no idea how to do. None of our rules fit but we wound up getting an answer in terms of x and everything and that's a nasty looking answer um, by doing what by translating that integral temporarily in terms of trick functions then doing our integration and then putting it back in terms of x that's the idea behind trick substitution now last thing i'll, I'll say before i let you go is remember this particular substitution this choice of x with being three sine theta was under the assumption that your radical had a uh, a squared minus u squared. Remember, there's more than one form. What do we do if it's of this form, or what do we do if it's of this form? Well, it's uh, actually not three times more work. Um, the idea is the same. All we have to do is make minor adjustments, very small adjustments, in how we set up our right triangle. That's really the only difference. And so, um, so this video is already getting pretty long, so we'll stop right here. And uh, in the next videos, we'll talk about how we unpack these two different types of um, trick substitutions.